a lot of you have been having trouble with the stopping on a dime lab. So I wanted to make a short video to kind of go over what you need to do. It's really not as complex as it looks on the surface. The first thing you need to be sure of is that you have the document from my Google site, not the one on Conexus, because I've reduced the assignment and taken away some parts of it that would be confusing for those of you who are working at home. Once you've entered uh, once you've downloaded the document, you may print it or work on it electronically. It's a Word doc and so uh, Microsoft Word, so you can type into it directly if you want to. Uh, but if you're not comfortable with that, print it out and fill it out by hand. Then you can scan it and upload it then. The purpose of this lab, or the problem as it's presented, is you need to find the distance around a basketball court where they could build buildings where people wouldn't run into them when they're playing basketball. You're going to use your formula for speed, speed equals distance divided by time, in order to solve this question. We begin the lab with some pre-lab questions that you'll see here. What key pieces of information do you need to know to solve this problem? Well, we need to know the speed, we need to know distance, we need to know time. Those are things. Distance and time are going to play a big role in solving this problem. How do we collect the data? What tools do you need to do this? Well, probably a meter stick or a measuring tape and a stopwatch or a phone with a stopwatch. What do you need to know in order to calculate the average speed of a runner? Tell me the formula. How do we find speed? Then you'll come to the first part of the lab. The first part is determining the reaction time. You're going to test your reaction time and you're going to test the reaction time of someone else who's also going to be running in the second part of the lab. So make sure this person can do both parts. The first test subject is going to be you and the second one's going to be the other person. Go to this website that's in the form here. Let me see if I can get it to come up for you. We're going to go to this website. You can just um, cut and paste that into your browser. And you will see, let's see if I can get this over where you can actually see it in the screen you will see this little reaction time test. What you need to do is click on this little uh, pink button here. It says click to start and it's going to show you a red light and when it turns green you're supposed to click. And then it shows here in the box the reaction time or how long it took for you to, to respond to seeing the change in the light. You're going to do that five times. Let me do it again, see if I can get any faster. Oh, a little bit faster that time. Then you're going to get an average down here. You're going to go through this, and so is your other test subject. And then you're going to enter that information in your document here. Let me move it back where you can see it on the screen. Oops, that's not what we wanted. Too many screens open here. There we go. So you're going to move it. You're going to record that information on uh, in this uh, form right here. Your average time. That's the first part. The second part is the stopping distance. You need to know the, how much distance is necessary for a person who's running at full speed to stop. Okay. And this is the method that's suggested. You can do another method, but this one's pretty easy. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to mark off a distance of 25 meters. If you do not have a measuring tape that has meters, or you don't have a meter stick, you can use 25 yards, but I'd prefer you use meters. We use the metric system. Okay? Um, have a partner, the same person, like I said, that took your reaction time test. Time how long it takes you to run the course full speed. And after you pass the 25 meter spot, you're going to stop as quickly as possible and stand there. Don't slow down before the mark, okay? So run full speed up to that mark and then start to slow down, all right? Now, here's where you're going to put in some information, and this is the part that's, I think, confusing some people. The average reaction time is from part one. You're going to take the information from that table and put that in. Running time is how long it took you to run the 25 meters and how long it took your partner to run 25 meters in seconds. 
And then the stopping distance is how far you it took for you to stop. Okay? Now, in your analysis and conclude section, you're going to calculate the average speed. Well, how do we calculate speed? Distance divided by time. What's our distance? They give it to us as 25 meters. So take that and divide it by the running time, and that's going to give you the speed. Now, in order to calculate, to take your average reaction time and figure out how much of that stopping distance is the result of the reaction time, we have to actually rearrange our speed equation. Because here, we're going to calculate distance. Okay? Here, we're going to calculate distance. And um, I don't think I can write it on this right here. So we have to rearrange, and that's going to give us a formula that says distance is equal to speed times time. Now the time in this case is your reaction time, and the speed is how fast that person was running. That's going to tell us how far that person goes from the time it takes for them to notice the line is there and to send that message to their legs just like the time it took for my brain to see the green light and press the button. Okay, So you're going to take the average reaction time and multiply that with the speed that you calculated to give you a distance. And that distance is how long it takes for that message to be sent before you actually start slowing down. Now you're going to take that distance for part three here and add that to the longest stopping distance and explain what we're talking about there. I want you to think this through, okay? This is the critical thinking part of it. And then, again, extending your thinking on this, why is it important to use the fastest speed and the slowest reaction time? Okay, why did we take those two in order to do this? And the longest stopping distance. Okay? And then number five, what other factors should we take into account when we're dealing with a real basketball court? Um, is the court wet? What kind of shoes are people wearing? Um, how fast are they going? I mean, that's going to have something to do with how big are these people? Are they little kids or are they grown-ups? Okay, those are all things that could apply there. Then you're going to be talking about the lab itself and how you could have modified it. How could you have gotten an even better reaction time instead of using the button on the computer. And then go through the rest of these post-lab questions and answer them to the best of your ability. And then the conclusion is a summary of everything that you've done. Okay. So hopefully this has clarified this a little bit for you. Part one is done on the computer, going to the website that's given there. And then part two, you take that average reaction time that you got from part one, put it in the graph, mark off your distances and test that. Shouldn't take very long at all. And then calculate the average speed of the person who ran the fastest. Use your average reaction time and your speed to find the distance. Add that to your longest stopping distance. And then just continue to answer the questions and analyze what you did. I hope this has helped you. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. It's very important that you get this lab done so that you can move on to the next part. And I am going to do another video to show you how to do the free fall lab. So I'll be looking for that one. And I will um, see you in live lessons soon. Have fun with this one. Thanks, guys. Bye.